Our speaker for today is Mike Reardon, and he is a 2003 graduate of the Pius X High School. Mike and his wife, Caitlin, have been married for 16 years and have six children. They are parishioners of the Cathedral Parish, and Mike studied accounting as a Franciscan at Franciscan University at Steubenville. Since graduation, he has worked in accounting for three years at Boys Town and currently works at Nelnet, where he has been he has been since moving back to Lincoln in 2013. He spends most of his time with his family at his parish and all following all things Husker sports. Mike is a passionate father, husband, and disciple of Jesus, and we are excited to have him here today. Please help me in welcoming Mike. Good morning. Let's pray together again because I need it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, we ask you to fill this space. We thank you for this day, and we thank you for Advent. We thank you for this school and these people. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you come into this place, and that you help us as we seek to hope for Jesus as we seek to welcome him into our hearts this Advent. Pray that my words may be your words. Pray for all of the students here, that their ears may be open to hear your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please come. Pope St. Pius X, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, good morning again. I'm Truly, truly humbled, honored, and grateful to be here. To be completely honest and transparent, I have no idea why I was asked to speak today. I'm not particularly holy or an especially dynamic speaker. I am definitely not a six foot four All American candidate at middle blocker for the number one ranked volleyball team in the nation who has an incredible story of conversion and faith and had eight blocks this weekend. She's amazing. I'm not her, I'm just a regular guy. I'm a husband, I'm a dad to six amazing children, and I try my best each day to lead my family closer to Jesus, and I love the church. I was blessed to grow up in a truly faithful Catholic family with amazing parents. We attended Mass every Sunday, CCD on Wednesdays, and we believed what the church teaches. But when I came here to Pius in the fall of 1999, I knew some things about Jesus, but I didn't really know Jesus or much more about his church than some surface level things. But God had planted some seeds early in my life, but Pius is really where they took root. They were given water and sunlight and air to breathe and flourish. Since then, I've had nephews and nieces come through here. I have four nephews here today and as of this year, I'm now a pious dad as my daughter's a freshman. Today, I've been asked to talk with you about hope. Before we dive too much deeper, I guess I should show you a little bit of who I am and, and the kids up there. So today, I've been asked to talk with you about hope. Before we dive too much deeper, I want to tell you that Jesus is our ultimate hope. And he's our ultimate model of hope. All the definitions and examples that I'm going to give you or speak with you about all flow from Jesus and the hope that he gives us because of his coming into this world and because of his death and resurrection. I also want you to know that I firmly believe that Pius X High School is a place of hope. Pius has given me so much. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But besides my time here as a student, I've been in this building almost weekly over the last six plus years as a teammate's mentor, an encounter mentor, and now as a parent. My experience, both as a student, a mentor, and now a parent, is that this is a place of hope. And whether or not that is your experience here day to day, I know that Pius can be a place that can increase your hope if you let it. Ultimately, Hope can be a bit hard to define and articulate. We know it when we see it, even if we can't always explain it. And hope is something that we see strongly in some people. I want to talk with you about specific people who I think have this virtue in just a minute. But I do think there are some things that we can say about hope 
to better understand what it is and what it isn't. When I think about what hope is, I want you to know first and foremost that you can pray and ask for it. So if you take nothing else away from our time together today, let it be that. You can and should ask for an increase in hope in your life. And like the other theological virtues of faith and charity, your Father in heaven who loves you will use the graces of your baptism and your confirmation and the other sacraments to give you more hope. If I walked around with this microphone, I'm not going to, but if I did, and I asked students how they would define or describe hope, my bet is that most people would say something about being optimistic or being positive. And I agree. I think that describing hope as optimism or positivity has a lot of truth to it. But in my mind, it misses the biggest and most fundamental point. If hope is just optimism or positivity about our lives in the future, we all know that it falls apart quickly. Our lives are messy. We all have stress and dysfunction in our lives. Life is just really hard. And just trying on our own to be positive or optimistic, it's not sustainable and it's not practical. The fact is, all cannot and will not be well and good in this life. There was a 2021 survey, and 42% of students said they felt persistently sad or hopeless. That's four in 10, and one third experienced mental health issues. So hope isn't just something that we hear about in theology class or in the Bible. It is really a gift that many desire to experience in the messiness of this world, and we're not capable of achieving or earning it on our own. Not very uplifting, I know, because I think, because thinking of hope as just positivity or optimism, it lacks the most fundamental element, which is Jesus. But most basically, hope is about how we live our day-to-day -day lives and our outlook on the future based on our faith, based in Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. Hope is about how we live our day-to-day -day lives and our outlook on the future based on our faith in Jesus Christ. If our faith is real, if our belief in Jesus is real, our lives look different and our future looks different. Hope tells us that we matter and our lives matter. True Christian hope gives us the freedom to live for what really matters, the eternal. When you live in hope, you have trust and faith in eternal life, okay? We're talking about hope because it's officially Advent, right? We're in that first week of Advent, and despite what the world is telling you, that it's already Christmas, the church gives us this beautiful time to prepare our hearts, to get our hearts ready for Jesus at Christmas. You all know what it's like to prepare for something, to prepare your home for guests. Yesterday we had a family over for brunch and we spent hours on Saturday getting things ready, preparing. How much more should we be preparing our hearts for Christmas and for Jesus? Arguably the most central figure of Advent is Mary, our mother something I don't think I've ever really properly reflected on before, and until I was thinking about this, is that during the Annunciation and the first Advent, Mary was likely high school age. She was likely a poor teenager. Pope Benedict's encyclical on hope says, who more than Mary can be a star of hope for us? With her yes, she opened the door of the world to God himself. She said yes because of her hope. Let's all pray that we can do the same, that we can say yes to God because of our hope, and that we can ask Mary for help this Advent. Aside from Mary, our mother, who we all know, I want to give you some other examples of what I think hope looks like. As I was praying and thinking over the last week about this talk, 
and about what hope really looks like, particular people at Pius, who I know, who I have a relationship with, started to come to mind. Unfortunately for them, I didn't tell any of them that I was going to mention them this morning. I want to be really clear. I'm not trying to canonize anyone today. I would, but I would assert to you that these people and many other teachers and staff here at Pius strive to live lives that demonstrate hope. Poor Sister Guadalupe, she didn't know when she took my phone to take a selfie this summer at Marion Camp that I would show it to the entire school. Nor did Mr. Corda, that's him on the bottom left, in case you don't recognize him, when he took this picture 20 plus years ago with Caitlin that it would be up here. But I put them up here for a reason. I want you to take a second and think about interactions that you've had with these people, with Mr. Corda, or with Mrs. Goobles, or with Sister Guadalupe, or with Father Bernardo. Again, I, I know these four aren't perfect. None of them have given me a demerit or a bad grade on anything. But I would guess that if you compared them to the average adult in this world, you'd find them different. They each live a life of deep and unwavering faith, and that affects how they look at the day-to-day -day and how they look at the future. They live lives with a sense of hope and joy that can only be the result of understanding who they are as sons and daughters of the Father. My interactions with each of them inspire me to want to live a deeper faith, treat those around me with charity, and I'd venture to say that's probably the experience of most of you as well. After I began praying about what hope looked like in a person, and I wrote these names down, I quickly realized that the Holy Spirit was showing me that your age, your vocation, your gender, or anything else doesn't really matter in this regard. Whether you're married or you're consecrated or you're ordained, man or woman, young or old, we're all called to live our life demonstrating the hope that we have because of Jesus. If you'll give me just another minute, I'd like to tell you about two people in my life who have and still do teach me more about faith, hope, and charity than anyone else. These are embarrassing pictures of me from high school. These two people were gifts that God placed into my life when I was here at Pius. They were a gift that I didn't merit or earn and they would shape me as a person and my faith to make me who I am today. As a freshman, I met Scott, who is still my best friend today. And sophomore year, I met Caitlin. Both are incredible people. And if you look hard enough around the school, you can find both of their pictures on the wall here at Pius. From the time I met her as a freshman at the beginning of my sophomore year, Caitlin was seeking to demonstrate faith hope, and charity in her daily actions and in her, in, in her interactions with others. She constantly encouraged me and our group of friends to be selfless people, to live beyond ourselves, to be good people, and to live our faith. She always did it in an unwavering manner. For me, she epitomizes letting your faith lead you in a life of hope. She has hope because of faith in Jesus, that gives her a drive to do all things with great effort and with great love. Close friends throughout our time at Pius encouraged that friendship through some twists and turns, turned into dating, and Caitlin and I got married in 2007. To this day, she's a beacon of hope for her family and friends. She makes those around her want to have a deeper faith and keeps me focused on the promises of eternal life. Scott, was Mr. Pius when he was here. He starred on the football field, on the LPAC stage. He was involved in campus ministry. He was elected to the homecoming court. He left a lasting impression on everyone, on administrators, teachers, and fellow students alike. I think he was genuinely liked by nearly everyone. And since his days here at Pius, he has been inspiring those around him and leading others to deeper conversion of faith. To me, Scott is the embodiment of hope. 
He lives life in a way that makes others want to have whatever it is that he has. His clear and unmistakable joy and faith radiates to those around him. His vocation led him to New York City, where he's a priest, and in final vows with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. When he took final vows, he took the name Innocent, so to us, he's now Father Innocent. Caitlin and I have begun an annual tradition over the last five years. We go and spend a few days with him each summer at the friary in Harlem where he lives. It's one of the great gifts of my year, and every time I leave convicted and renewed about my faith and what that should mean for how I live. Each day when we're there in New York City, we walk around the streets of Harlem around the friary. On any given day where we walk, countless neighbors, people who live in that area on his block, they want to talk to him. They want to say hello. And these people are the poor, the hungry, those with mental illness, all types of brokenness. And they want to be with him, and they want to have some of his time. And it isn't because he has money or other things to give them. Of course, if they're hungry, he's going to give them a sandwich and a cup of coffee. But typically... They just want to say hello. They want to tell him a story. They want to ask him a question. They want to be with him. They see in him something different than anything else they see in their neighborhood. Hope, which is the result of a deep and prayerful faith. Okay? I wanted to share about these people in my life because I know that you have people like this in your life as well. People who have a deep faith, that makes them live in a way that's inspiring. Many of you are that for others, and all of you can be that for others. As we prepare our hearts for Jesus this Advent, let's take some time to reflect on the people that he, that God has given us, that reflect him in our lives, and the hope that our faith brings us. Let's pray about how much We let our faith bring us hope, especially when we're in discouragement. And let's pray to recognize those around us, friends and adults, that we have been given who reflect that hope of Jesus Christ. As we move forward with Advent, let's ask the Holy Spirit to increase our hope this Advent season. A hope that's more than optimism. It's more than positivity because we have Jesus. In my Bible reading this morning from Corinthians, it mentioned how the disciples were accused of turning the world upside down. When the truths of our faith give us hope in all situations, good and bad, positive and negative, the ups and downs, we look different than the rest of the world. And that's a great thing. Our faith tells us that we're made in the image and likeness of God. Our faith tells us as baptized Christians, as Catholics, we're the sons and daughters of the Father, and that we are loved. You are loved, and you matter. Hope doesn't mean that you'll always be happy or that life will always be good, but in the ups and downs of life, hope keeps us stabilized and focused on the eternal. The hope of Jesus is reflected in the faithfulness of those around you. It's reflected in the faithfulness of your parish and your family and your teachers and your friends. The hope of Jesus is all around us, and I pray that we can all recognize that more this Advent. Let's close in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this season of Advent, for this season of preparation. We know that our faith gives us hope in eternal life. It gives us hope in the day-to-day and in the future. And we thank you for the gift of hope. I ask that you give all of us more hope this Advent season, especially those who may feel discouraged today, who may feel that they don't matter or their faith doesn't matter, I ask that you give them hope. And as we prepare for the end of the school year and we prepare for Christmas, 
Let each of us be a beacon of hope to our friends and our family and throughout the world. All glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.